Crawford, BBC News, Aarhus. Well, more now on the specific plans here in Britain. The Prime Minister, David Cameron, has outlined his ideas for tough new anti-terror laws in the UK. Speaking to the Australian Parliament ahead of the G20 summit there, he said that suspected extremists who'd left to join militant groups could face being excluded from the UK for up to two years. Anyone who did return would be subject to stricter monitoring. Mr Cameron also said he wanted the police to be able to confiscate a suspect's passport as they tried to leave Britain. We will shortly be introducing our own new counter-terrorism bill in the United Kingdom. New powers for the police at ports to seize passports, to stop suspects travelling and to stop British nationals returning to the UK unless they do so on our terms. New rules to prevent airlines that don't comply with our no-fly lists or our security screening measures from landing in the UK. Well, Mr Cameron also said internet providers have agreed to strengthen filters to stop people viewing extremist material. Let's get the thoughts of Shami Chakrabarti, director of the British civil rights group Liberty. Uh, what do you make of these proposals? I noticed that um, the Prime Minister also said, by way of introduction, that he wanted um, to promote the rule of law and that British citizens needed to sign up to the rule of law. I don't think you promote the rule of law by dumping your citizens like toxic waste on the international community unless, unless they will accept coming back to the UK to face punishment without trial. Isn't the, the, point, of of this, though, isn't yeah. the point of this to try and stop young people, as we're seeing, leaving? We're hearing, I heard from one person, that they think it's about five a week, and if they know that they can't return home ultimately, that could be a deterrent. If they want to come back, they can hand themselves in. I think injustice fuels the desire to go off and fight. I don't think it prevents it. And that has been my experience of these, of these tough speeches and unjust? ever tougher pieces unjust? of legislation. Yeah, that's why, just, why do you think this is unjust? Why is it unjust to exclude your citizens from returning home unless they are prepared to agree to punishment without trial under a TPIM? Why is that unjust? It's unjust because it doesn't involve charges, evidence and proof before you are punished. Well, it does either have by to go being, through, either, either it does have being, to go through either by British... being rendered stateless or by having to face punishment in the community without trial. You know, well, it will have to go through some sort of judicial process, presumably, and there will have to be some sort of evidence. That's not what is being proposed. I'm sorry, but maybe I misread the speech, but what I understand to be proposed is that people coming back will be told they cannot return unless they accept a TPIM, which is a rebranded control order, which means close supervision in the community, like a community punishment order, but without criminal charges or a trial. But if people are found to have been... I mean, this is only going to happen if security agencies and the intelligence agencies have got evidence, presumably, of some sort of uh, militant activity. Are you really saying that, that the authorities should allow those people back into this country where we know that they then pose a risk to the British public? Well, we don't know. That's why, we, that's why we've had centuries of fair trials in the UK. Would you like to face punishment without trial? That's well, my question. On want. the basis of secret intelligence alone, well, I that will don't never want... mature into charges, evidence and proof. That is a way to recruit jihadis, not to prevent them. Aren't you Aren't justifying you... people going out there? They will just use your argument to say this is another reason for us to, to leave the country and you're promoting individual liberties of these people over the security no. of the public. No, I'm not. I'm promoting centuries of democratic values that we say distinguish us from tyrants like ISIL. That's well, what I'm the, doing. The, the fact the is that the, the world is changing hugely and surely laws domestically and internationally have to change to keep up with that. Is that the fact or is that a journalistic question that you're putting to me? Oh, well, I'm asking you. Okay. And my answer is that I believe in fundamental human rights and the rule of law as foundational to democracy as what it is we offer our people and the world as opposed to what is being offered by ISIL. That's the difference and that's the difference we need to promote. Shami Chakrabarti, thanks very much indeed. Now we're just going to show you some pictures because uh, in Brisbane at the G20